Hey guys, Dean here. Today we're back for another video and in this particular one, I'm going to be talking about millionaire habits that change my life. These are basically business fundamentals and habits of rich and productive people that really helped me in terms of my workflow with YouTube, with this channel and my other channel and in terms of investing and generally trying to be productive. These bunch of tips will really help you to keep productive throughout the day and keep a positive goal-driven mindset through whichever type of passion you actually have. So let's begin. So the first one is simple simplifying your life. This basically includes limiting the number of decisions that you have in your life to basically optimize decision making from completely oversaturating your mind and draining your mental energy. Remember, your mind only has so much energy and you can't really split it into so many different things. It's always good to keep your attention on a few different things, not too many, and putting your hands in every single basket can quickly drain your energy and also shift your focus elsewhere. Decluttering your mind and the amount of decisions which you have to make really allows for more space to create clearer decisions and focus on what matters more in life. This is also key in business. It's best not just to think about five different ideas and rather think about maybe two or three or two really good ones. Stop worrying about tiny small little choices and about little tiny things. The next one is just generally being frugal. So this is mainly focusing on living below your means and trying to retain some kind of money or savings. More savings allow for more investment later on or more savings for a safety blanket for later which is very important as I found out. Frugal living just basically allows for more money to be left over or saved up and it prevents the wasting of money on things that aren't really going to benefit you in the long run. This includes trivial things like expensive items or dinners but also it's important to realize that you do sometimes need to treat yourself or if you're on vacation this doesn't really always apply. The next one is surrounding yourself with like-minded people, basically people who share the same mindset or the same type of values or goals. And this is really important because when you listen to business podcasts or listen to a similar kind of content, you always see the same quote. You are the average of the five people that you hang around with or spend the most time with. And to be honest, to a certain extent, this is true. I've had certain experiences throughout time. I've been around positive people and I've been around negative people. And the positive people always had the focus on the goal. And for an example, one thing I remember is some people in school who were very negative, they kind of carried that dark cloud over everyone that they interacted with and as a group it just rubs off on everyone. So surrounding yourself with like-minded people is very important. So. For an example, i.e. if you surround yourself with five Michelin star chefs who are amazing at the craft, you might be the next great chef because they have a lot to pass on and teach you. You'll likely get good at cooking, it just makes sense. And if you surround yourself with five millionaires, then you're likely probably going to become the next because you're going to learn what it took for them to get there and they're going to talk about business and things which are just going to be very beneficial to you and you might want to try things out. So people who have a business mindset or who are in the same space as you and are either successful or putting in the work to get there, those are great people to have in your social circle. And also if you're one of those people that lacks motivation or finds it hard to stay on track, this is a great social dynamic to have because you have people that are always trying to strive to be better and it kind of initiates the whole competitive mindset, which is really important. And also it offers a sense of having accountability partners in the same space, which also leads me on to my next point, which kind of ties into this whole theme and that's getting feedback regularly, right? So getting feedback from your social circle. I usually tend to tell my close friends about my ideas or my progress. If I haven't really got too far in something, I don't really overshare too much because then you're basically getting the achievement of kind words and great, amazing feedback without actually achieving a goal. So it's important not to overshare, but sharing ideas and developments can be really good to kind of throw out there and see what people's opinions are on them because sometimes you can be a little bit self-serving in the sense that you're always going to like your own ideas for the most part. Part. Not only is this good for motivation, but generally for feedback to get an unbiased view, because from your own point of view, you're always going to be biased to your own ideas if you like them. So it's good to kind of get an idea of what other people are thinking about them. And this is really important for personal growth and also to stay grounded and kill the ego. I think if you surround yourself with honest people who aren't yes men and they always tell you the cold hard truth and don't sugarcoat things, then this is going to be important as well for developing your business or just generally personal growth. Then the next one is positivity. 
positivity. So this is very important, right? Surrounding yourself with positivity and watching positive and uplifting content, for an example. All the content you consume, all of the surroundings that are around you and your own situation, that contributes to your own mental well-being, right? So as we mentioned before, the five people you hang around with the most, make sure those people are positive. Some people, they naturally do get negative or they have problems or struggles in life and that's normal. So it's okay to support your friends and not cut people off who are just going through a hard time. But if people are always negative or just generally have an unfairly negative outlook on life, sometimes it may be okay to get away from that situation. But make sure the people you surround yourself with have similar values and they aren't pulling you down or even dragging you down and insulting what you're doing or having a negative outlook on it. If you're always surrounded by depressed people with a damper on life, it's going to affect you in some way. And if they're people with a victim mindset, then you're likely to be the same or brought down too. This can be common in friendship circles to a certain extent. So it's always important to identify if people are going through something or if they're just generally a negative person, because sometimes they do genuinely need support from you as a friend. But also another key thing is not listening to sad or unhappy music. I see a lot of people and friends of mine in the past who have gone through depressed periods and they've asked me for advice or I've tried to help them and they've not really been helping themselves in the sense that they're sad or depressed and then they've been adding on to that and compounding onto that feeling by listening to depressed music, depressing music or sad music or sad films or depressing themes and surrounding themselves with people who are also feeling like that too and that's not helping yourself to get out of that situation. I know also from experience that's not good content to consume when you're in that space. And the next one is scheduling right so scheduling your daily workflow and setting a list of the daily tasks which you need to achieve in that day and optimizing your productivity. This is really important okay so I do this mainly with my video ideas to always stay creative and staying on target with my creative goals that I do set, which we'll go on to a little bit later. I have two channels to run and I need to usually make one video on my main channel and then one on this channel. And I always need to make sure that ideas are coming and flowing. I have an idea list which I've built up over a series of months with hundreds or thousands of video ideas already set to go. And I shift the ideas around based on their importance, based on current trends and based on videos which I think will do well and also help people and offer them value. So if you always have ideas, then it's always important to set the next video idea you want to do if you're doing YouTube or schedule your day out if you're running a business or trying to achieve something so you know exactly what to do in that day. Otherwise, you'll put things off or not be as productive. It's best to optimize your workflow for productivity. The next habit is setting goals with deadlines. Okay, so this is very important. And for me, I set short term goals, but I also set long term goals. At the start of the year, I usually create a notepad file and it's just called goals of the year, right? So 2019, I think I might have started this, then 2020, 21, and 2022. So it's important to set both short-term and long-term goals and being clear of the goals by setting deadlines for them, okay? This allows you to achieve them a lot sooner than you would if you didn't do this, and it prevents you just shrugging them off or falling off track with them with what you want to accomplish. It helps to enforce better habits and it allows you to achieve things earlier on rather than just stretching them out. This works for any any type of goal, right? So it works for fitness goals, it works for business goals and general life achievements and it achieves general clarity. For an example, if you want to lose 10 pounds, it's best to say, I want to lose 10 pounds in two months rather than I just want to lose 10 pounds, but it can come off whenever, right? That's just the mindset that you need to have if you need to do something because it pushes your mind to say, okay, we need to kick this into action. It needs to be done. If you want to get a certain amount of subscribers on YouTube, for an example, you need to work towards that. You don't really have control over the whole algorithm and how the website works and how your audience will react to it, but you can definitely take action and try to do your best to achieve that goal sooner. The next one is exercise regularly. So exercising regularly can really help with your general mental health. Since I was around 14, I was basically using weights and dumbbells over cardiovascular exercise, but I think cardio also has a very important role. I have an interest in gym and bodybuilding type strength training, but I think cardiovascular exercise like jogging, running is really important for your mental well-being and it really helps you. And I think it also does raise testosterone in men when they exercise and it gives that kick of dopamine. So Going on to the topic of being positive and not negative, this is a great thing to incorporate into your daily schedule and routine. I always liked sports as a kid and I kind of got 
the interest in weights as a teenager so I never really needed the motivation to actually do it and be forced to do it it wasn't really a learned behavior in adult life but as people get to 18 19 and they start going to the gym this is a great thing to start doing and putting into your schedule obviously doing exercise and gaining strength and trying to reach a better body composition is just generally good in terms of your motivation and also to show that you do have some form of discipline right it shows other people that you have some kind of physical discipline and they'll probably think that you have the same in terms of your mindset for everything else so that's an important thing I guess to command some kind of respect I think that's why a lot of people do go to the gym but also it keeps your heart healthy and your other organs so if you're doing a lot of jogging or running it's very good long term for your health and heart this doesn't really have to do with business it's just with your mindset and part of your schedule and I think most rich people do go to the gym and try to generally attempt to look after themselves in some kind of way next up is reading right so reading is important it's something which I didn't do for many years now right now admittedly I don't read nearly enough but when I'm traveling a lot on the plane I always read on my Kindle and I read more factual books rather than fiction because I feel like those kind of books can help me more mentally in terms of development and I choose to read on the Kindle because I prefer how the device is it's very compact I can put multiple books on it without carrying books in my backpack all the time or having countless books in my room in my space which can be a little bit annoying if you want to be a little bit more minimalist reading self-help books or factual books for me has always been more self beneficial right self-help personal development business and social psychology styles of books are my favorite genres to help in just developing and bettering my life in some kind of way millionaires tend to always read a lot and they read a lot of books a year also some people they just don't have time to read or reading just isn't really for them a way you can use this to your advantage is use audiobooks instead it's basically just like listening to some kind of podcast right but you listen to someone actually narrating the written book now audibles are great thing first I do actually have an audible trial which you can click down in the link in the description below and I'll give you a 30 day free trial and I think two free book credits where you can listen to books on audible I'd recommend some pretty cool books for an example social books how to win friends and influence people probably the most popular one that's a good start and also business books rich dad poor dad is also a pretty good read too so those kind of books you can get for free over on there and go check them out so next up is investing this is a very important habit which i'm trying to get back on the bandwagon of which obviously if you know anything about this there has been a market crash recently and people have different views on that okay so the key rule of thumb in terms of investing especially if you're a person with an average salary trying to get into the market and grow the wealth in some kind of way i feel like starting off the rule of thumb is 20 percent of your monthly income being assigned to savings or investing is a really good start point and it doesn't really affect your living situation too much and it's quite sustainable right so if you can assign that amount of your paycheck every month and put 20% into some savings or into investing then that can be really beneficial this is basically allowing your money to work for you rather than you working for your money so putting some kind of earnings in investments and this allows the money itself to benefit from compounding it gives you a higher chance of achieving a higher state of wealth instead of just sitting in a savings account with poor interest most savings accounts are like 0.01 to 0.05 percent interest and you really don't get anything in return for having that account right investing gives you usually an average of like 10 percent return when the market is doing good 10 to 13 percent something around there and basically this hedges against inflation because your money day by day is always losing value if it's sat in an account and the interest in a typical savings account is not enough to actually hedge against inflation so it's important to put it in some kind of savings account like an isa and have some kind of investment basically crypto is also a good investment but crypto has tanked hard recently and the stock market has had an utter crash too now we don't really have enough trend data to really decide whether investing in crypto is going to be good over the long term in terms of its recovery i think it is a good investment personally but that's a risk that you have to make all the advice in this video is not financial advice it's my worldview of the situation in my personal opinion i think investing right now in the crash stock market could be a good idea to get some kind of return later because over the data we've seen since like the 1920s or so the american stock market has always seen a recovery right so buying it during the dip right now i think that can make some rich people in the long term if you weren't to hold so i think personally it's a good time to invest but that's just my personal opinion now i have videos on both okay so if you want to start investing in bitcoin and ethereum and all those kind of cryptos and you want to basically dip your toe in the water regardless of the situation with it do your own research of course i have a video on that that will 
be linked down below and i also have a video on how to start investing in stocks and shares and index funds and etfs and i explain what it's all about if you have no clue so those two videos will be linked down below too the next one is diversifying your income via multiple income streams okay so this is something which i'm coming to realize right now because my main income stream is youtube and youtube is pretty good okay it's nice in the sense that you can set your own hours and work and you can always strive to achieve larger numbers rather than a set salary but it can be good not just to rely on one thing because if views go down or if something happens it can impact you greatly that's why i'm trying to diversify my income streams right now and i do have a video on this i have a video on home business ideas you can start right now and passive income streams for you to make money on the side i'll link both those videos in the description too as well so you can check those out this is things like building some kind of side hustle or extra business and just diversifying a little bit so you're not putting all your eggs into one basket meaning more money is coming from multiple places this prevents focusing on only one thing one income source and feeling more financially comfortable when you're not relying on one thing this is also important if you have a job the normal average job if you get fired or sacked you have no income and you're pretty much in for a bad time right so if you have some kind of side business side hustle incomes come from investments and in multiple sources you'll feel a lot more comfortable in the long run if you want to learn business ideas to start for this just check the videos i mentioned down below and then there's also the next one which is patience general patience right so having patience and that the everything is possible kind of mindset always seems to pay off okay it helps you to achieve anything in the long run even if sometimes you can be a little bit naive or stupid by thinking this way all the time having the mindset that you'd rather try and fail or try consistently and keep failing until you achieve it is a good mindset to have because eventually you'll achieve it and things will typically work out if you keep putting the effort in this allows you to usually will anything and make it possible for an example, YouTube, a lot of people told me that wouldn't work out. A lot of my friends thought it was probably wrong to chase, for an example. But after two years of heavy effort, it did start to work out and it has become a job and an income stream, which you can keep on doing. But that took a lot of effort to do. So it does take a ton of patience to actually get in there. Unless you're extremely lucky or some kind of outlier, usually some kind of business will take you maybe two or more years to actually build up and develop and scale up to a point where it's going to benefit you in the long run. For an example, I saw YouTube as I built it up a few years ago that you could go to university for two or three years and be in debt, or you could do YouTube for two or three years and then it would work out after that time period that you built it up. So you kind of need to look at it in a different light like that in a positive way for it all to actually make sense. But this makes sense with any kind of business and or risk. And obviously, if you're younger, you can make these risks because you don't really have as much responsibility to certain things. Then also forgetting time being an exchange for money is very important important okay so as i was building up youtube and looking into certain businesses i'd always hear mainly my mother but also from other people how much are you getting paid for this an hour is actually worth it compare this to other jobs where they might make 30 40 50 pounds an hour are you making this but this is a bad way to look at things because as a business scales it has the potential of making far much more than a job and if you started your own business where it starts out really bad you'll be poor for a long time right and also if you've had a youtube channel you'll know what it's like to have no income and then at some point a ton will come in and sometimes you'll be just a normal average income there's a lot of different points and perspectives which you'll go through and it's not always great to compare this to a normal job and that works in the case of any business also remember time being an exchange for money people only have so much time and they're exchanging it for exactly the same amount of income in a nine to five job for an example and then trying to chase some kind of promotion over five or ten years to actually increase that value and it has a set block on that number if you're starting a business or doing anything in that kind of sense it's really not the same thing and you need to chase the long-term wealth that's going to come in rather than saying how much am i going to make an hour for this right now and that ties in with a last point which is raising the value on time right so you only have so much time in a day to achieve something this is why we talked about scheduling this is why we talked about optimizing our workflow and our productivity and going over a few of the other points but this is also important to people who have already scaled up a business for an example but they're doing everything themselves. Now, I always like to use YouTube as an example because it's personal to me. People who have been a YouTuber for a long time, they still edit all the videos, they still film all the videos, cut everything and do all the work just like most YouTubers do when they start out. And some people continue to keep doing that like what I am doing currently. But at some point, for an example, it could be useful to hire an editor so you can upload quicker so they can do that work for you and hire people to work for you to do research, script writing and basically allow people to do other parts of your job or your business to save you more time and 
stress. Sometimes money can be worth less than your time because money you can make more of, there's always much more money circulating in the economy, but time you can never go back in time and get that back. So remember, always keep high value on your time and learn to say no and learn to use other people such as employees to help you out and save you time. This can be important in the long run to always focus on. And that concludes this video on millionaire mindsets and habits which changed my life and the way that I looked at productivity and running my business. If these tips helped you, make sure to click the like button and subscribe for more finance videos, travel videos, and vlog videos over on this channel in the future. We talk about all things money here and traveling around the world, and that's what you can expect to see if you subscribe. See you next time.